Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm continuing a series of teaching mechanics. Um, I'm going to build on what I started on resolving forces and today look at forces on a slope. So that's when you've got an angle to deal with. Um, and I will start with a very basic scenario. It's quite tricky to disentangle all the skills you need in mechanics. Um, to make anything meaningful, you need a lot of skills in a fairly complex um, combination. So there's going to be a lot going on even though it's a basic situation and there's only going to be one worked example today. But please do grab a pen and paper and pause the video, work through anything you need to yourself at your own pace and I hope you find something in this that's helpful to you. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with a really um, basic setup here actually. Just I've literally just drawn an object on a slope. <laughs> And that is it. We're just going to play around with uh, looking at what forces are on there and how to deal with that angle. Um, it's just got that tricksy angle alpha and it's just knowing what to deal with that and how to resolve your forces. So whenever you've got a question um, that's about objects and forces, you basically follow the same process every time. And that is get a good diagram, mark on all the forces, then you then get some equations by resolving the forces in the direction and then solve the equations. So mark on the forces, write some equations and then solve the equations. That is your basic three step process for all of these questions. Um, let's start then by marking on the forces. It's best to use a different colour to the drawing. So I'm going to use red for the forces here. What forces will be acting on this object? This object we're going to assume is a just like a particle. We'll just treat it as a particle so we don't have to worry about its dimensions. Um, but it will have a weight. So let's mark on that. The weight will always act exactly vertically downwards. That's not very straight, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll give it a weight. Uh, let's say it's four kilograms. No, let's say it's five kilograms because that's going to make things easier. <laughs> um, let's say it's five kilograms. So weight is mass times G. So we'll, we'll mark that on as mass times G. So five times G, that is not G for grams, that is G for gravitational pull. Um, so that's the weight acting vertically downwards. We'll also have every time there's an object that's touching anything else, there'll be a reaction force a reaction force from that thing that's perpendicular to it, perpendicular to that slope, that point of contact. So that's the reaction force coming from that slope. I'll just use R for reactive, reactive force. Um, also, um, that object, if we just let go of it and it's just sitting on a slope, it's going to want to roll down or move down the slope unless the slope has friction that stops it from moving. So. If it's a smooth surface, it will go down the slope and you'll have to use F equals MA to work out its acceleration downwards. But let's here today practice using friction. We'll say it's an equilibrium. We'll say it's at rest on the slope. So that means there's friction acting on it to stop it going down the slope. Friction always opposes the motion that's trying to happen. So it always goes in the opposite direction to the desired <laughs> motion. So here, friction is going to be acting in resistance that way up the slope to stop it sliding down. So friction. Friction, you can use a capital F, but oh, we often use F, don't we, for force? Uh, maybe FR, friction. Um, but we can use an equation here, friction, and you need to know this off by heart. Friction equals mu times R. Mu is the Greek letter that we use for the coefficient of friction. Now that coefficient of friction is going to be different for every scenario and surface, um, <coughs> for every surface. Um, but you're often given what that is or you're asked to work, work it out. So that's just a number. Um, so friction equals mu times R and R is that reaction force that we've just marked on. It's the reaction force from the surface that the object's on. So friction equals mu times r, you need to know that equation. Uh, and that is all the forces. That's just three simple forces acting on that object. It's a very simple situation. We don't have any strings or any extra forces. We're just going to start there today. Um, 
And we're just gonna practice really dealing with these angles. Um, then the first thing I'm just gonna show you is often, instead of giving you an angle for that slope, instead of giving you like 30 degrees, I've given you alpha. And the reason is often, you'll be told tan of that angle. Instead of being told the angle itself, you'll be told tan of the angle. Um, so try not to be tempted to do inverse tan of three quarters to work out what that is, because then you'll have a decimal that you've got to round and then you lose the accuracy. But here we can maintain the accuracy beautif beautifully well. If you can use that information to then pull out sine and cos of the angle, then it cuts out some work actually. And the way to do that is to just draw a very simple right angle triangle, mark on alpha on, I on either of those angles, it doesn't matter which, um, and then tan from your basic trig is opposite over adjacent. So we can mark on, it's three over four, opposite over adjacent, and that makes it that makes it work. Tan of alpha is three over four. Um, now you've got that, you can use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse. Um, so that hypotenuse will be the square root of three squared plus four squared, which you can work out, or you might know from the Pythagorean triple, that is five, it's a whole number. Um, and if you're given sign, tan, of an alpha, tan of an angle, then um, it tends to be a Pythagorean triple, it tends to be whole numbers. So now we can pull out sine and cos of that angle. So sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's three over five. And similarly, you can do cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four over five. And then you can just use those angles exactly as they are in your equations. Right, now that's done, I just wanted to show you that. It's not really a trick, it's just a skill <laughs> that you need. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Now, I said the process is to mark on the forces, get some equations and solve the equations. We've done the forces, now let's get some equations. Now, to do that, um, you need to resolve the forces, so look at the forces in a certain direction that you've chosen. Now, if you're on a slope, it makes sense, it's easier if you use the directions perpendicular and parallel to the slope. Let's start with looking at the forces perpendicular to the slope, so at right angles to that slope. Um, I'll just write down here perp for perpendicular and do a little arrow so you know which way I mean. It's like that way. Perpendicular, we'll look at the forces perpendicular to the slope. We're gonna have R, the reaction force, that's perpendicular. We won't have friction because that's parallel to the slope and forces that are perpendicular to one another like just don't affect each other at all. So friction won't affect this. So we've just got the reaction force and we'll also have a component of the weight. Now, this is the bit I really want you to practice. This is the skill that you need to nail. Um, you need to break that weight into two forces, two components that are perpendicular and parallel to the slope. So it's gonna have this weight here is going to have, oh goodness me, that's not straight, is it? <laughs> it's going to have a component that is perpendicular to the slope acting downwards, and it's going to have a component that's, that's parallel to the slope acting downwards. So your right angle's there, can you see that? What I'll do is I will pull this out to the side and draw it over here. So this is your triangle, that's the weight. And what I've done is I've, draw, I've turned that into a right angle triangle. So the hypotenuse of the triangle is the force, the weight, 5G. What you need to do is be able to um, label the sides of that triangle using the weight and the angle that we've got. This is what, this is resolving forces, that's what we're doing here, is we're turning that force into components that are helpful to us. So, we need to work out which of those angles is the alpha that we care about. Um, and 
there's a few ways to do this, but I'll, I'll just show you how I think about this in this scenario. Um, if you've drawn your diagram well enough, then you might be able to just tell which one's alpha. But um, here we've got a right angle. Can you see that? Um, and then this angle in this right angle triangle will be 90 minus alpha, because that one's a right angle there, right? So if that one's 90 minus alpha, then this one, because that's in a right angle as well, the green one will also be alpha. I'll just say that again. The orange angle will be 90 minus alpha, because it's in a triangle. And then the green one is next to it will be 90 minus that. So it will be alpha again. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to undo that just to tidy up my diagram. But that angle at the top there is our alpha. I hope that made sense to you. Um, if not, ask someone else. <laughs> right, now we've got that alpha at the top. We can start thinking about what those sides are. Let's just label them for now. We'll do this slowly the first time, X and Y. Um, so X, no, let's start this way. Let's do sine of alpha equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's Y over 5G. You can then make y the subject by multiplying the 5g up. So that's 5g. So I nearly wrote cos sine of alpha. So what we've done is we found that this side is 5g sine alpha. I'm going to move over here and do the other side. Have a go. Do have a go at this. Um, cos of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over 5g, and then make x the subject by multiplying that up. 5g cos of alpha. And here I'll just relabel that. So that is 5g cos of alpha. Can you see what we've done? We've taken a force, turned it into a right angle triangle, and then we've labelled those sides with in terms of the force and the angle. Now that is an incredibly useful skill. And really, um, you need to be able to practice that. <clears throat> Get to the point that you're so confident doing it that you can just glance at that triangle and know that the side that's next to the angle is cos. And the side that's opposite the angle will be sine. So instead of writing out all that we did to the left there, you need to be able to just glance at that triangle and be able to label those sides straight away. So do practice that. Get that skill in your toolkit that you can do it quickly and confidently. Um, and then that is the secret to the question, really. That and a good diagram, that's, that's it done. <laughs> right, so we've labelled the forces. We're now looking at the forces in the perpendicular direction. If we had any movement here, we would be using F equals MA, that basic structure to make an equation. But here we don't have acceleration. We are in equilibrium. So we can use just the forces up equal forces down. So let's do that. Perpendicular to the slope, the force up is R equal the forces down, the force down is 5g cos of alpha. And that's the perpendicular bit that's downwards. Right now, we can go over here and say that cos of alpha is 4 over 5. Substitute that straight into the equation. That's the beauty of using these fractions. And I'm using a little dot there for multiply. Now, the reason why <laughs> at the beginning I chose my, changed my mind about the weight and changed it to 5 is because that one I cancel. That's great, isn't it? So, um, R is 4G. Let's just leave that there. Wonderful. Let's practice resolving parallel to the slope. It's good to do perpendicular and parallel. Parallel is like that way. Um, so forces to the left equal the force, well, forces down the slope equal forces up the slope. 
Now, forces down the slope will be 5g sine alpha. Forces up the slope is friction. So 5g sine alpha, that's going down the slope. Force up the slope is friction, that was mu r. And we can use this to work out what mu is. We're basically, we're working out what what um, value of mu, what the coefficient of friction would have to be on the slope for this to sit in equilibrium. That's quite clever, isn't it? Um, r, we can replace with, f with 4g, because we just worked that out. So that's 4g times mu. Sine of alpha is, what is it? What's sine of alpha? 3 over 5. Let's put that in. 5g times 3 over 5. It's not sine of 3 over 5, it's just 3 over 5. Uh, those 5s will cancel, leaving us with 3g equals 4g times mu. We can cancel off a g off both sides. I like how I've made this question mean that we don't need to use a calculator at all. 3 over 4 is mu. And that's it. So we've worked out what the coefficient of friction would have to be to hold that in place. That's good, isn't it? Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I think I might do one more example, but I'll do it in a separate video because this has got really long. So um, stay tuned for another example, making it slightly more complicated. But I hope that was helpful. Keep practicing and enjoy.